Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready for the SAT. It is the recommendation of Prince George's County Public Schools that most students take the SAT during the spring of their junior year. No student should take the SAT without prior preparation, and it should be known that it takes approximately four hours. During this program, you will become familiar with how to approach the different types of questions on the SAT, how to work within time constraints, and how to look for clues to reason through complex questions. Welcome to SAT Prep for Math. This is Ms. Metzl from Parkdale High School. I'm the SAT Prep math teacher there. Today we are going to cover arithmetic. And that covers things such as numbers, operations, comparing numbers, simple calculations, and a little bit of algebra in terms of solving for one or two step equations. Today we're going to cover special symbol problems, simple equations, solving for an integer, and converting measurements. Let's get started with the last one that I said. And here's an example problem. If Juanita can make 10 centerpieces in 15 minutes, how many hours will it take her to make 960? Center, center pieces. Well, the easiest way to start this is you look and see that there's 960 that she's trying to make. So we start with that. Now think, if I have this, what, how can I cancel that out? Think of fractions. I'm going to use this right here. And I'm going to put the 10 center pieces at the bottom. Because then I can cancel that unit or measurement out. And up top, because it is called a ratio, I'm going to put 15 minutes. But notice, they want it in hours. Right now I have it in minutes. So you must ask yourself, how many minutes are in one hour? There are 60s. So I'm going to stick it on the bottom and stick one hour on the top. Then we're going to turn to our calculator if you have one. If not, you can easily do this without one. And you're just going to turn it on and you're going to punch in 960 times 15. And that gives me my top. which is 14,440. On the bottom I have 10 times 60. You should be able to figure that that is 600 and divide the two and you get 24. Looking at your answers you see that it's D which means that is what you're going to bubble in on your answer. Next we're going to look for or look at a special symbol problems. These are not hard problems, they just look strange. I always tell all my students, when you think about it, just think about when you were in elementary school and you walked in and your teacher said, guess what class, today we're going to learn about adding, then they did subtracting, then they added a thing called multiplication, division. Now that you're in high school, they're probably adding radicals or square roots. This is the same thing. They're just giving you a new quote operation and seeing if you can logically figure out what it is. So let's look at the problem. It says let z at w be true if this equation z is less than w divided by 3 is true. Using these numbers which are below when, when is this true? So all you have to do is this is going to be very good. You've got to do a little bit of math just plugging in the numbers then you're going to use some of your strategies which is crossing out answers that you already know that are wrong. So let's get started. All it is is you're going to match up these numbers here with what it says here. So this problem tells me that z, because it's the first coordinate, is going to be equal to 1 and w is going to be equal to 3. So now we're going to substitute into this equation and see if it makes a true statement. If it does, the solution is good. If it does not, then we're going to come down here and cross it off. So let's see. z is less than 3 over 3. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So you must ask yourself, is 1 actually less than 1? The answer is no. They are equal. They are not less than or greater than. So this answer cannot be true, so it is wrong. I'm going to come down here at any one selection that has a 1 on it, I'm going to cross off, which leaves me A gone and E gone. I have B, C, and D. Now you can notice quickly that they all have the same answers, 2, 3, or both. Now I'm going to have to do both answers. There's no shortcut to it. So I'm going to go here to 2. If you look at the second choice, or second inputs, we're going to see that it's 2, 10. So z equals 2, and w equals 10. And I'm going to go back to my equation. And I'm going to say, is 2 less than 10 divided by 3? 10 divided by 3 is 3.3. 
three repeating. And if you're not sure, you can turn to your calculator, and let's do it right now just to double check. 10 divided by 3 is 3.3 .3 repeating. Is 2 less than 3.3? .3? The answer is yes. So that means 2 is true. So we cannot cross off any choices until we check number 3. So let's look at our third choice. By now you should be able to quickly say, okay, z equals 5, w equals 4. Is 5 less than 4 divided by 3? You should know certain fractions and these are one of them, so you should easily be able to say that 4 divided by 3 is 1.3 repeating. 5 is not less than 1.3. This answer is wrong, so we have to get rid of C and we have to get rid of D, which means our answer is B, only 2. Remember when you're taking the test that if you can cross off an answer, please cross it off right away. This is a time saver. What happens is if you're working on a problem, if you start getting frustrated, keep in mind you can stop the problem, you can go on to another one. If you've already deleted or chosen that certain answers are wrong, you're good to go. When you come back, you don't have to rethink what you've already thought. Also, remember to put as much work down as you can, or as clearly, you don't have to stick every single step like I am so you can see what I'm doing and what I'm thinking, but it helps for if you have to stop the problem and come back. So let's go on to the next problem. This problem. When the first grade class gets together with the second grade class, there are 24 children. If there are six more children in the first grade class than the second grade class, how many children are there in the second grade class? Now, this looks like a hard problem, but it's actually not. Just remember, take your time, read it slowly, use those reading skills that your English teachers taught you. So let's go back to the problem. When the first grade class, does it matter that it's a first grade class? No, you just have to know that's one of those things they're talking about. Gets together with the second grade class. So they're talking about two classes. There are 24 children. It's a number, nine times out of 10 it's gonna be important. What it's saying is first grade students plus second grade students equals 24 children. If, now let's go on. If there are six more children in the first grade class than the second grade class, Okay, so that's telling me six more children in first grade. So first grade, there's six plus however many second graders there are. So that means the second graders, we can say, there's, let's say, G students for grade. So this is actually saying six plus G. We already set up here, though, 24 children total. Quickly, six plus G plus G. That's first grade plus second grade is totaling 24 or equals 24. You can quickly solve this. Subtract 6 from both sides. 24 minus 6 is 18. There's two G's, so we're going to divide by 2. G equals 9. This is saying there are nine second graders. What are they asking for? Second grade. Be careful. Not all of them are going to be this simple. Sometimes they ask for first grade. You must be very careful that you actually know what you're doing. Let's go back to the problem. I'm going to show you a little trick. One thing that I always suggest is whenever there's a problem like this, circle whatever they want you to find. This is a time saver and a reminder. If you're reading the problem and you finish the question, you have it circled. It's kind of like a bullseye. You're going to zero in on this. So we already have the second grade nine. The answer is B. You're going to bubble in B on your answer sheet. Just remember to take your time, read, and like I said before, write down what you need to. You can always come back. Let's go to the next one. The next one may look like something that you would see at the end of Algebra 1 or the beginning of Algebra 2, but it's not. It's a very simple equation. When y equals 2, what is one possible integer value of x? I just told you that if there's something that you are zeroing in on, please circle it so you know. One possible integer. Using your reading skills, you have to know what an integer is. It, you don't have to have a textbook definition. Sometimes just being able to say, okay, an integer is a whole number. If I get a fraction, a decimal, or something like that, you did something wrong, rethink it. So I read this and I say, when y equals 2, very simple. What is one possible integer? Integer, I'm looking for a whole number. So we're going to look at the equation. 170 divided by y is less than x squared, which is less than 300 over y. 
Well, they gave me y equals 2. Let's plug it in and see what happens. So I put 170 divided by 2 is equal to x squared less than the 300 divided by 2. What is 170 divided by 2? You can easily figure it out with your calculator or by hand. Every calculation should be able to be done by hand on the SAT. 2 goes into 17 8 times. You're left with 8 times 2 is 16. Remainder 1, bring your 0 down. 2 times 5 gives me 10. So it's an even number. So far, so good. Is less than x squared, is less than 300 divided by 2, 150. Now, how can I get rid of this x squared? Solving equations, remember, is very simple and very easy. Whatever the operation is, you do the opposite. If they're adding a number, you subtract. If they're dividing, you multiply. In this instance, what are they doing? They're squaring. Square root is the opposite of squaring. So I'm going to square root every part. Square root of 85. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. You can calculate it out. But if you're not, please remember, take the biggest, baddest calculator you can take. So let's quickly figure that out on the calculator. So. On the, if you have a graphing calculator, you have to do second x squared to get the square root. And I punch in 85, close my parentheses, and I figure it out. And it is 9.21 is less than x, and I go back here, I just plugged it in. Square root of x squared, these two cancel each other, I'm left with x. Then I go less than, I'm not sure what the square root of 150 is, so I'm going to go back to my calculator. And I'm going to do the same process. Second x squared, 150, close my parentheses, and I get 12.24. I do not always have to keep track of everything precisely. I am doing this just because I'm not sure what I'm looking for yet. So I go back up here. I have this thing. I know a range. So I look for my circle. One possible integer. Oh, integer. That's that whole number. What numbers are between 9 and 12? They only want one. There's 10, 11, and 12 fit. I only need to put punch in one or grid in one. There are two types of math problems on the SAT. Bubble in or multiple choice, which we've already had a couple of, and this is a grid in. There are multiple ways to do grid ins. Just remember, if it's a fraction, you must put it in as an improper fraction or a decimal. This instance, we have an integer, so we do not have to worry about it. So let me show you how to bubble this in. You either push it all the way to your left or all the way to your right. Now, the SAT is different than most of you guys have been trained for the HSA, which says you cannot stick it in the middle, but you can. I always say stick it all the way over. So, I put the 1 and the 0, I bubble in 1, I bubble in 0, and I'm done. There's, you do not have to put decimal points. You do not always have to fill up every single position or digit into the grid in. Just remember, be as precise as possible. Okay, thank you. Now, we just finished gridding this in. You push the 1 and the 0 in. Now, that is all for today. I hope that it helped you out some. Please remember that this is not all that is on the arithmetic or all the arithmetic type problems that are on the SAT. There are plenty of other ones. Most, some of them you can just punch in. Most of them you can punch into your calculator, but not all. They all require some sort of thinking. So please, if you need any additional help, feel free to ask one of your math teachers in your school or get a book from your local library. Thank you and have a good day.